In this episode, we're going to start discussing with the different JWT vulnerabilities uh, because JWT token, as we saw in the previous episode, it's been used by uh, most like, you know, various applications and very common for all the APIs as well. So we're going to discuss what are the vulnerabilities, how do we test it and, and how do we uh, like, you know, make sure our developers know that how do we prevent those vulnerabilities. I know it's been a while, but if you like this lecture, please give it a thumbs up. I, it's been just very busy uh, time for me, uh, but I hope uh, I can give you some value with this episode. So token sidejacking. So this attack occurs when a token has been intercepted or stolen by an attacker. They use it to gain access to the system using the targeted user identity. Now, as we know, JWT, uh, we, we see all the previous lecture. If you haven't seen that, uh, go check it out, like how it is architected in three different parts and, and like, you know, how does it cover the authentication as well as sometime authorization as well. Now, suppose this token has been stolen or intercepted uh, by the attacker. Uh, maybe like, you know, it's it's very hard to like shoulder surf, but let's say someone got access to your system and then like, you know, they got it or maybe um, that's a man in the middle attack and they intercepted the token. So what are the ways uh, you can prevent it? So one, uh, uh, like, you know, standard way to do it is on addition to token where the user authenticates, you create a cookie. And now this random cookie string, similar to the value of the cookie string will be like, you know, something like session ID. But this will have all the necessary flags. So it will have HTTP only, it will have secure flag, it will have same site cookie, mix edge, cookies, prefix. Uh, and then we are also going to compute on top of it, SHA-256, hash of the string. So suppose someone steals the cookie value uh, but then they will not be able to like you know manipulate the token and it will also prevent uh, the issues against like you know cross-site scripting where someone steals the cookie value using cross-site scripting and then, then you reuse it. So this is uh, in addition with the JWT if you also pass this cookie value then of course the, the attacker life becomes more difficult because then they have to and then you can add a lot of values in these cookies as well. You can add like a fingerprinting data, uh, which we saw earlier as well in, in one of the, I guess, like, you know, the tour video. Uh, then we also saw like can add the user context and stuff. So you can also personalize this cookie as much as you can. And, and then you can prevent CSRF and like, you know, side checking kind of attack. Now during the token validation, if the received token does not contain the right context, for example, if it has been replayed, then you can reject it, right? So that's the easiest way to prevent against token sidejacking. Now, when you do pen test on the application which uses the JWT, make sure you definitely test out this kind of vulnerabilities. Now, one of the things which is very common for the JWT issues, right? The problem is inherent to the JWT because token only becomes invalid when it expires. So in the traditional applications, like when you log out, the cookie becomes invalidated and then you cannot replay the cookie. But that's not the case with the JWT. The user has no built-in features to explicitly revoke the validity of the token. This means that if it is stolen, a user cannot revoke the token itself, thereby blocking the attacker. Now you would think, okay, what is the best way to prevent it? One of the ways which come to my mind is, okay, how about we take the token and put it in the block list uh, or like you know blacklist of the tokens imagine you have million users imagine your blacklist like you know uh, database which is kind of keeps on growing 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 and how do you how long do you keep it and there are so many other issues right so one of the best solution you could have is what we discussed uh, token sidejacking. How sidejacking is going to solve this issue? So, for instance, like when the when the user requests some uh, data from the application, your application would need not just the token, but also uh, it will also need the uh, cookie value, which is uh, supplied by uh, we discussed in the previous solution. If the and of course you can you always have a chance to expire the cookie, and if the cookie is expired, you invalidate the token as well. Now this will prevent like you know you need to go through the blacklist approach and and create like you know whole list of blacklist tokens now here uh, you are also increasing the likelihood uh, like you know of the uh, of the sorry decreasing the likelihood that the attacker can exploit the application because now not just the token 
but it also has to intercept the cookie as well as the JWT. And if the user closes the browser or log out the session, it will invalid the cookie automatically. So your problem is solved. So when you are doing this uh, pen test and suppose the application is critical and if you see the JWT is only way to uh, access and, and suppose you locked out and, but the, and you try to replay the JWT and you still get access to the data, then additional recommendation for uh, you must recommend is having this site checking solution. What is the non-hash algorithm? You must have seen in one of the, like you know, when you dissect the JWT token. So this attack occurs when an attacker alters the token and changes the hashing algorithm to indicate through the NUN keyword that the integrity of the token has already been well verified. So that's what we discussed in the previous lecture, like what is the non-hash algorithm and why it should never be used. So the f how do we prevent it? So first, you use a JWT library that is not exposed to this vulnerability. Few very rare old libraries are still vulnerable, uh, but you definitely need to do due diligence and make sure uh, the library that you're using is not one of them. Lastly, during the token validation, explicitly request that the expected algorithm was used. So instead of allowing uh, users to choose the algorithm or accept anything, you explicitly require like whether the algorithm is set or not. Uh, the next one is token information disclosure. So this attack occurs when an attacker has access to a token or a set of tokens and extract information stored in it. Now if we saw about JWT has three parts and the second part may contain some of the user context. Maybe the user ID, maybe the role of the user, maybe some other information, we don't know. And by default, uh, there is only like, you know, we uh, use like base 64 encoding for this token. 64 encoding may or may not be uh, like, you know, uh, of course, anyone can decode it because it's just an encoding and not an encryption. So if you think when you're pen testing and if you observe like you decode the token and if you see any sensitive data, maybe PII, maybe IP address or something, because it violates the privacy law as well. Someone can collect all the all the IP addresses of the user, right? Uh, if they steal all the token, even though those are expired tokens, but you can still uh, attack. As an attacker, I can still collect all that information. What you wanna do is you definitely want to encrypt those. Uh, so encrypt those using symmetric algorithm or something, and that's the way uh, protect against like you know uh, uh, this kind of attack. So you first need to analyze what sort of information that's uh, like you know stored by this usability token and if it's pretty much sensitive you definitely want to recommend to have the symmetric algorithm to maintain the confidentiality of the data all right next one is the token storage on the client side so this occurs when an application stores the token in a manner exhibiting the following behavior maybe the token is in cookies then of course it is uh, like you know uh, vulnerable to cross site scripting and other client side attacks if it's using the local storage, of course, the local storage can be also exploited uh, using the XSS. So how do we prevent it? So prevention is easy. One, you want to use the session storage. Uh, session storage is also not, I guess, secure all the time. Uh, but you may want to put like, you know, in top of it, like content security policy, which is, I guess, one of my recommended, uh, highest recommended solution for any application. But then you also want to have the HTTP bearer authentication and then you want to add fingerprinting as a token. And when you're adding fingerprinting, it just makes sure that the, the token which is used by, for instance, my system, if I use that token, if I take the token and use it by another system, it won't work because the fingerprinting of my system wouldn't match with that system, right? Depending on how hard the fingerprinting is done, of course, there is a way to bypass, which we saw again in the one of the dark web uh, series as well. If you haven't, do check it out. Another attack is the weak token secret. So HMAC, uh, we have seen that. Uh, most of us think it's a secure algorithm, uh, but maybe it's not. So if an attacker can obtain a valid JWT, they can carry out an offline attack and attempt to crack the secret using John the Reaper or Hashcat. We have seen the practical uh, solution on how John the Reaper or Hashcat works in our advanced web application pen testing. So if you haven't looked it through, do so. But it is uh, fairly possible that weak token uh, can easily be exploited and like, you know, uh, decrypted as well. 
So use the strong secret. Uh, what are the strong secret? The WASP has full list of guidelines, but also uh, there are, of course, like you know, rather than using the HMAC, you can use the RSA, uh, which is much more stronger and and authentic as well. So this is all. I think uh, these are all the JWT related vulnerabilities you wanna check it out uh, when you're doing the pen testing on the applications which uses the JWT. If you encounter any of this, uh, uh, like you know, uh, do note it out and and like you know, have have a meeting with the developers before you you discard the issues because one of these could also become very high risk issues if depending on the application context. If you have any questions, feel free to comment it down. Uh, I'll try my best to get it back, and I'll also try to get back with some more episodes in the future as well. Uh, I'm actually focusing more on the generative AI, which I know uh, most of you guys also focusing on right now. So I'll come up with something like that. If you have any other questions, uh, like you know, meanwhile check it out the other videos and and let me know. Uh, you can also reach me out via email as well. Uh, please hit the thumbs up button if you haven't already, and I'll see you guys as soon as I can.